So Affirmation.org, which is a uh, gay and lesbian Mormon site, is reporting on the death of um, a 38-year-old uh, LDS man who lived here. Uh, he actually worked at the University of Utah Hospital in Salt Lake City. Um, he killed himself uh, just uh, towards the end of March here uh, on the 18th, I believe. Um, his name was uh, Chris Wayne Beers, and he was very active in his church. He was a returned missionary. Um, he was also gay. Mm -hmm. um, in the last couple years, he seems to have um, kind of finally run afoul of his church, probably, um, because he started being more open about being gay. Um, oh, okay. He had worked in the church uh, office building and missionary travel department, and... Um, at the time of his death, he was no longer working for the church where he had apparently worked for most of his life. Um, again, probably due to the fact that he was trying to be more open about who he actually was. Um, and unfortunately, um, I guess he decided he had enough and he killed himself. And, you know, there's not really too much detail going on in the story here. Um, his funeral service was just held on March 24th. Um, so we kind of have to infer a lot, and I don't want to be putting words into people's mouth or anything like that, but, um, you know, there's a lot of suicide of, of gay teens, mostly, in Utah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think when, when we talked about Eric, when we talked with Eric about how much alienation goes on, you know, like, he talked about how, um, I think this relates, he talked about how, you know, drinking is like heroin. You know, yeah. like, the idea of, like, having a beer with dinner or having a glass of wine mm -hmm. on the porch, you know, uh, in the evening, you know, it's just that you're, it destroys your whole life. And I, so I think when we end up talking about something like this, which is, uh, you know, coming out as being gay can be so catastrophic for your life, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you live in a place as religious as Utah is, I think the alienation that this guy probably went through probably had a big impact on the decision uh, when well, he finally ended his life. When, when you think, too, that the conflict, the open conflict between the church that he seems to care so much and it stands yeah. on people like him right. would, like how, would vastly affect that as well. How, how difficult must it have been? I mean, he worked for the church for a long time. I mean, he went on a mission, apparently loved it. Um, uh, you know, he worked in the missionary travel department. Uh, he, he worked for the church for a very long time, clearly mm -hmm. loved it was clearly really important to him, but then he had this other part of himself that he couldn't, he couldn't square with it, and, and you've got, um, you know, the LDS church doing all the stuff with Prop 8, you know, which is yeah. thankfully history now, but I think that gay Mormons sort of live in a world now where the reality of how their church feels about them as equal citizens has been made clear. You know, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I still seem to know so many people exactly this situation. I mean, this guy was clearly struggling with this, with being homosexual during the time that Prop 8 all occurred. Right, and right. now he's even finally more open about it. When the church lost Prop 8, that they still wish they could stand by, you know, firm. And I, I don't know. It's just one of those things where you watch people have that double think of, like, they... They can't let go of the faith, but then they don't. They just ignore the parts of the faith that, that they do don't not, like, right. you know, match up with their their lifestyle. Right. You know, but eventually, this one weighed out for him probably because he was being isolated or, um, right. you know, looked down so upon it, by it, others around him, and then that was maybe the beginning of the end for him. So, but it, so, it, but what it sounds like, just from what I'm inferring from the fact that now he was working at the hospital and. Um, had he had fallen away from the church and, you know, mm -hmm. he wasn't really going anymore. So he, he had decided that being himself was more important than going to this church that was going to tell him that he was bad and, you know, his, his nature is sinful and mm -hmm. that he should be ashamed for having these, uh, feelings of being attracted towards other men. So he apparently leaves the church and I'm guessing it's the isolation. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing that it's the, he is totally cut off from his social network. His family, I mean, being as religious as he was, I, I am making the assumption here that his family, family was really religious as well. And it's just yeah. the total cutoff of like, we can't talk to you now. We can't be with you. You're not welcome for Christmas dinner, right. at Thanksgiving. You, you know, and, and I'm totally guessing, but 
based on the fact that he had left the church and was moving on with his life, I, mm -hmm. I feel like it's that social outcasting that probably weighed on him a lot. I just Yeah, it was too much. You know, and it, it totally comes back to that, well, what's the harm? Well, you know, here's the harm. And it's, you know, no one forced him to take his life, but it, it, it the, um, I think the church isn't blameless when uh, they come down so hard on homosexuality and then gay people kill themselves. I mean, yeah, no, did the church put a gun in their hand and make them kill themselves? No, but I think they bear some responsibility. Yeah. It'd be much better if he could just be accepted for who he is. Yeah, that would be nice. But the rules don't allow it. So, so you know, 